Hey guys, we are back again. Um, this video, unfortunately, is not going to be any of the modification stuff to the front. Not all the parts are here yet, so I'll have to wait one more week. Not to mention, it's super cold out, so I'll show you real quick, just so you know I'm not lying. It snowed here, so it's mostly melted on the ground, but it's been rainy and cold here, too. It's like 25 degrees. Feels even less than that with the wind chill, so... I can't take the bike out and do a video somewhere else. I'll show you one thing I did real quick before we get into the video content, but I took these high-vis badges that they had on the bike. So there was this red one, one on either side underneath the uh, rear fender here. So I took those off, just pressed them off, tape fell off right with them, and then on the front there were these orange ones and the tape stayed on those ones so those were on a little bit better so i'm gonna have to use some goo gone and flathead or something to tear it off without scratching the paint or anything like that so i took those off makes the bike look a little bit better i think already just more black and less color so more matte black is always better otherwise this video is going to be pretty much everything that i hate about my indian scout bobber slash riding now I have to preface it with saying there's nothing I truly hate about this bike, only things that I am going to change to enhance it. Um, and if you watch my other video, you know how much I truly love this thing, so that should be of no surprise to you. But I'm also going to include just some of the cons of riding as well, so not necessarily pertaining to this bike ex only, but also in general things I don't like about riding sometimes. Uh, the number one con of this bike and or riding is going to be cost. So cost of everything. New bikes are expensive. Seems like prices are only going up. Uh, cars and bikes. So used bikes are going up in sale too. I was looking at used Indians before I bought this thing brand new and they're pretty much almost the exact same price as a brand new one, which is essentially why I went with this one, a brand new one in, in the end. And then if you've never rode before, the cost of the MSF course is going to be a couple hundred dollars on top of that, which highly recommend if you have never ridden before, like me, if you grew up on dirt bikes or something, whatever, you'd probably be fine. But on top of the cost of a bike, new or used, you're going to have to take that MSF course to get comfortable on the bike first, or a bike in general, before you get one. Then you're going to need a helmet for sure, which is at least $150. A good jacket's going to cost you another 100 Boots, at least another 100 gloves, or anywhere from 30 to 150 if you really want to go after it. And then uh, pants. I don't have any myself, but I'm starting to look at them because the jeans are not protecting me from the wind, the cold wind of the Midwest, like I'd hoped they would. Uh, especially on the highway. I notice it a lot more. I get cold real quick. It doesn't help that I take my bike out in the early spring when there's still snow on the ground, but pants will probably alleviate my problems. Cost of upgrades on this bike, so as you guys know, um, I do not like these chrome levers, the brake and clutch lever, and I do not like the front blinkers, and I do not like these mirrors. Um, I like that they're bar end, but they stick up way too high in my opinion, so it's about five, almost five inches above from where you have your hand wrapped around the grip, how high this sits up. And when you look at it from the front, they just flare up, um, and you could have them down too, but no matter which way you have them, I don't like that they're sticking up or down when the rest of the bar is pretty much flat and slanted, you know, like this the entire way. Then those just stick out on the ends. It just looks bad to me. So the new mirrors I got are going to be a little bit more low profile, smaller, and closer to the handlebar, so that should help the issue. So the number one con is just going to be costs. There's going to be a whole lot of costs with riding a motorcycle. Not just the bike, you know, there's insurance on it too, license and registration fees, all that stuff. It's going to add up quick. And then you need the proper gear, you need to make sure you know how to ride a bike so the MSF course comes in. And then you're going to want to change the bike when you get it into your possession too. There's always going to be something you want to fix about it um, or, you know, enhance in one way or another to make it better. The exhaust pipes are way too long for this bike, longer than the tire, so it just looks ugly in that regard. Not to mention, since they're so big, like just 
you know, tall from the bottom to the top there, they make the rest of the bike look smaller. Whereas if you had smaller pipes on there, it just makes the rest of your bike pop that much more. So I don't like the exhaust pipes on here. And in fact, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the 2022 models, the new Indian Scouts and Scout Bobbers actually have the um, exhaust shields here are now chrome, I believe, instead of the matte black like this. But then it goes back to a matte black exhaust pipe, so that just looks really goofy now. Again, I'm, that was what I saw last time I was at the Indian dealership within the last couple of months. Maybe I'm wrong, but I could have sworn they had chrome here. And then matte black exhaust pipes, which just looks ridiculous when you have a pretty much all blacked out bike and then, I don't know, chrome popping up in bits that it doesn't look right to. The lean angle is 29 degrees, as I mentioned before, and you notice it quickly. Even as a new rider, I noticed the lean angle on this thing almost immediately. And now just about on every roundabout, I scrape a little bit which it's not a big deal, and if I get another bike, then maybe I'll get one that has a better lean angle so I can take it harder in the corners. But then again, this is a cruiser, so it's not meant to be thrown in the corners like that. It's meant to cruise around town and have a blast with. Highway riding um, is a little difficult after 15 to 20 minutes. It's a lot of fun, especially if you're hammering on the throttle. But after that first 15, 20 minutes, when the wind's beating on you that whole time, because there's no windscreen or fairing or any protection like that, so the wind is hitting you directly on your chest and face that entire time, it's a lot of work to keep your back upright. So you're either going to use your lower back to do so, or you're going to use your hands and arms to hold onto the bars so your lower back can work less. And either way, it's going to wear on you quickly. The longest I've had this bike for any trip would be almost two hours. It was like an hour 53 or something like that. And by the time I was done, I was walking wider. Like my, my foot stance was wider than it was because I was just sitting on the bike like that and my hands were stuck in a circle um, as if they were holding the grips even though I no longer was. The cold kind of contributed to that too though. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, the windscreen would make all that difference, but if you're putting a windscreen on an Indian Scout bobber, I'm sorry, we cannot be friends. It's nothing against you. It's just uh, it's a big no-no in my book. If you want to go out and buy an Indian Scout, go for it. But if you're buying a bobber, there is zero reason you should be putting a windscreen on here. Because if you're buying a bobber, you're buying it for the looks, and then you're immediately ruining those looks by putting a windscreen on here. It's no longer a young person's bike or a retro mean motorcycle at that point it becomes your grandpa's bike i love the fat front tire a lot it makes it look really good up front but in the back it just looks a little weak um, because they're the exact same size which i think the back tire should always be the same size if not bigger than um, but just looking at it, it just looks way too not strong enough in the back if that makes sense there's all this space here between the exhaust pipes enough for my foot with some wiggle room um, and I think a fatter tire like a 240 millimeter would just make it look that much better the front looks great you don't need to change that at all from the looks of the back but right down here to the low side I don't know that fat tire 240 millimeter tire would really bring this thing together that being said it's gonna be a couple months out at least because that's a two thousand five hundred dollar plus project the cheapest one I've seen is through RC components. But if you guys see a cheaper one, do let me know because if there's a cheaper option to put a fat, fat tire on the back, I will definitely do it. And if I can do it while not paying over $2,500, I would be really interested. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys have seen anything else like that. I have been looking all over the internet and I haven't found anything quite as uh, fat as that tire on RC components site. So. I'm not in love with these curved handlebars either. Um, it should just be flatter, I think. So I think, you know, more rocked, uh, sorry, rocky and like edgy look to them. So not a curve, but maybe lines cut, which I found one that were Trask handlebars online, uh, but they would not fit the bar and indicators and mirrors, which I had bought for this bike. So I'm weighing out getting rid of these indicators over having the best bar, essentially. I would prefer to get rid of these than have the, the bar I really want. Um, so I'm going to have to stick with the bar and indicators and mirrors and the ugly bar for now until I find something better at least. 
Otherwise, I think that's everything that I don't like about this bobber. It's a shorter video for sure, because there's not how much that I don't like. And we went over just taking off those uh, high-vis stuff. Oh, here's one more. This one's just on there as well. Damn, they use some good tape. Oh, I'm gonna have to use two hands to get my flathead in there. I don't want to break nothing or bend the metal or anything. So I'll take that off and you'll see that reflected in next week's video. Hopefully it's supposed to be warm then and the parts will come in. So I'm hoping that next week I can drop a video on the front upgrade stuff. And then after that, I'm going to be trying to mount the GoPro on my helmet and uh, give you guys a first person point of view when riding on this beast and maybe some zero to 60 stuff. Otherwise, drive safe. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next week, hopefully with a longer video and a much more interesting one.